Trickster dodge. Can't catch me. Star, star, star. You were almost a jibble sandwich. This game is so good. It's so good. I think there's some ammo I can get over here, though. Why can't Nemesis enter, by the way? So, I remember watching a video on why Resident Evil 3 Remake is the worst game ever made. And they brought that up in that game. That when Jill pushes over the cabinet, Nemesis can't get in. Like, why doesn't he get in? Like, why can't he just kick the door open? It's just a cabinet, right? Why can't he get in? The RPD, in the original. Is it because Nemesis is, like, really, really smart? And he, and he could find a way around? His, the environment? Like he does in both games? Like he jumps off of the top of buildings and shit? To scare Jill? Because he's smart? Like, like, in the lore, he's, like, actually smart? And can think for himself? He's not just a zombie? Maybe he's just fucking with you. He's pushing the doors. Because in that, he sees Jill go in there. In the in the other game, like, she, he sees Jill go in. And then he freaking busts through the, the ceiling in front of you to surprise you. Because he's smart. He's trolling you. No, Resident Evil 3 Remake is the worst video game ever. If it doesn't do... If it doesn't have Nemesis, just break a door open. It's a, it's a conversation that will never end. It's an argument that will never end. <laughs> Jill can push Nemesis off of a building in this game, and she can push Nemesis off of a bridge at the end of this game. But Jill is a, is a Mary Sue <laughs> perfect character in the remake. She does, she does too well, you know, in that game, so... It's bad. Um, okay. I gotta go grab the key. Okay, zero, one, three, one. I just love how my, my sentences that I just said are like... It's not negative, and then people in the chat are like saying negative things about <laughs> the game. It's like, no matter what happens... <laughs> you can't win. Oh my god. I really hope... I really hope the grenade launcher is in this room. If it's not in this room, I'm gonna be so sad. Alright guys, pray with me. Pray with me. <laughs> you will give me the grenade launcher. Locker. Magnum's in chat. <laughs> What a nightmare. This game is a nightmare. I just want my freeze rounds, okay? Hey Wolf, how much ammo does it take to kill Nemi if you get the Magnum? Baby mode rounds? Oh, come on. This is Carlo. Send in support. Immediately. This game is so bad because there's no bathrooms in the station. Well, right. out there and we're gonna show them who's boss. Oh my god. We're in quite the, quite the, uh, <laughs> situation. We did it. That wasn't that hard at all. Hey, I don't need freeze rounds if I don't get them. Because I'm, I'm the best, I'm the best at this game. I'm so good. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yay. The weird thing about Metal Gear Survive is that the story isn't that terrible. It's actually, like, it has hype moments in it, which is like, I know, that's crazy to think about. I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually finished Metal Gear Survive. I beat that game. It's kind of weird. Like, that game, just overall, is very strange. Like, it has, like, Kojima, like, length cutscenes. I'm sure that, like, whatever Koji Pro staff was left over, just, like, adapted 
the design philosophy for that game, and they tried to make the best of it, you know? But yeah, I thought the final set piece of that game was actually kind of cool. I was like, oh, this is probably what they were gonna do in Phantom Pain at some point. <laughs>